NASA spends loads of money every year, and in 2020 their budget was around $22 billion. Are they wasting money when they could help life right here on Earth? Hello everybody and welcome to the show. I'm Jonathan and today we are looking into the top 8 ways that NASA's love for space exploration has actually benefited all of us. Hopefully, by the end of this episode, you'll have a better understanding of why it's okay to explore space while also working to solve problems on Earth. For the sake of keeping things fairly simple, we will start by looking at the 2020 federal budget, where the US government spent around $6.6 .6 trillion. $6.6 .6 trillion! And that's what some people would say is a lot of money. Of that, NASA only received 0.3%, which is $22.6 billion. So I could say, hey, NASA just spent $22.6 billion. That's too much money. Or I could say, hey, NASA only got 0.3%. That's not a lot of money. You or someone you know may say things like, those funds should be spent on solving the world's problems. First thing to consider with that statement is that the money used by NASA, that 0.3%, has a positive impact on the economy. It not only supports highly skilled jobs, but it also pushes technology that we end up seeing used in other fields like, oh, I don't know, the medical field, the military. I mean, those are pretty important areas to a lot of people, right? This money goes right back into areas that help solve problems related to Earth. Earth-related problems. NASA generated more than $64.3 billion in total economic output, supported more than 312,000 jobs nationwide, and resulted in an estimated $7 billion in federal, state, and local tax revenues. And then, you know, don't look up. Like the movie. By exploring space, we further our knowledge of things like asteroids, which could very possibly be a concern one day. I mean, it certainly wouldn't be the first time something has altered our planet. And if we can spend the time and resources with something like DART, then we just might be able to prevent another extinction. When we send things out like the Parker Solar Probe, we are able to learn more about our sun and the solar flares that could be devastating to our entire planet. Solar flares have the potential to be so strong, they could wipe out all of our electronic devices. We've seen extreme events in the past, but in today's world, with the amount of tech we rely on, we could be hit so hard that it would take three to five years to recover from the effects. But at the beginning of the episode, I said I would tell you the ways space exploration has helped life on Earth. So here are just some of the inventions we use daily. Number one, your computer mouse. That's right, NASA and Stanford researchers developed the first mouse in an effort to help with onboard computers. Number two, light emitting diodes, or as you know them, LEDs. Their initial use was to help with growing plants on space shuttles. But as you may be aware, we use these in nearly every piece of technology today. Your TV, your phone, computer, cars. But beyond that, LEDs have been used in medical devices to help relieve pain in cancer patients, soldiers, and many more. Number three, air purifiers. Another one used to help grow plants, air purifiers were designed for use on the International Space Station. Now we can just get one from Amazon. Number four. This one is a hot topic these days, a baby formula. Perhaps one of those happy accidents and additive used in many baby formulas was first intended to be used as a recycling agent. It has two essential fatty acids and is perfectly safe as it is derived from vegetable oil. Number five, CAT scans and MRIs. Now this one goes all the way back to the Apollo missions. NASA's digital signal tech is the whole reason these medical devices work. Number six, water filtration. To make sure astronauts had access to safe water, NASA used a filtration system based on iodine and cartridge filters that we now see in common use like in homes and businesses. Number seven, firefighting equipment. Not only the flame retardant, heat resisting suits our firefighters rely on to keep them safe, but now they are able to take advantage of cooling and breathing systems used in astronaut life support systems. Number eight, artificial limbs. Who would have thought that the efforts of improving our space vehicles would lead to better artificial limbs? Thanks to new sensors, coatings, and foams, there are more comfortable, better functioning, and more durable, lifelike limbs available to those in need. And to run through a bunch more, weather forecasting with satellites, GPS, satellite TV, many parts of how the internet even works, infrared ear thermometers, ice-resistant airplanes, portable computers, 3D food printing, shock absorbent rubber molding in athletic shoes, 
home insulation, memory foam, the camera in your phone, freeze-dried foods and visible braces like Invisalign, scratch-resistant lenses like these, wireless headsets, better tires, solar cells, and the technology behind LASIK eye surgery, oh, and uh, insulin pumps, and the list goes on. In the end, we know the world is suffering from plenty of problems. Many that need a lot of people to help make a difference, not to mention lots of money. But here's the thing, we don't have to stop doing that, like at all. We can have the people and resources that help the world's problems directly and have space exploration. Otherwise, where do we draw the line? Should everything be focused on solely helping the world's problems? No more sports or at least no more multi-million dollar deals for players? No more big action movies that cost millions to make, which by the way, we have had a lot of movies that were inspired by things we have learned from space exploration, and that means thousands of jobs. Even as individuals, we have the ability to focus on more than one thing at a time. We can all do more to help the world, but we can do that while also spending our money to see big blockbuster movies and paying too much for a season of football on TV. If you want to be an advocate for something you believe in, then you should do that. But the truth is, those problems we all want fixed will not be done by simply moving 0.3% of a budget to another category. Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I would love to hear your thoughts about this topic down in the comments. And feel free to watch this episode here to learn more about our return to the moon. And as always, thanks for watching, and what did you learn today?